are back on The Young Turks. And Misty is in the house. Stick around because at the top of the hour, we are going to be talking about entertainment. As if politics was not entertaining enough for you, we're actually going to be talking about the entertainment wing of the entertainment industry uh, after the hour. And that uh, is going to be some welcome relief after I've spent the, new, the weekend looking at this financial and economic information. But I got to tell you this before we go. I got to show you this. Okay, when I was looking up that other story, the one about Wall Street, you know, because I wanted to get the quote right. And uh, yes, I'm a nerd. I have an iPad. I'm sorry. Okay. And here's what came up. Two things. This shows you how insane the right is. Okay. As Wall Street polices itself, prosecutors use softer approach. That was what came up in my Google search. Right below it, Justice Department's witch hunt against banks will hurt the economy by openmarket.org, which is a right-wing group, Hans Bader uh, is the author, another law designed to prod banks to make loans in low-income communities, blah, 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 uh, contributed to the financial crisis, says the Wall Street Journal, Investors Business Daily, that unimpeachable source, bankers and economists, well, economists who work for bankers. So uh, the insanity goes on and on, but look, if you get paid good money to believe or preach insanity, you'll preach insanity. That's the bottom line. And that's what we're seeing today. So as Wall Street polices itself, prosecutors, okay, Justice Department's witch hunt. Witch hunt, they're witch hunting again. They're, they're, they're burning bankers at the stake. Now, I scroll down a little bit. You know, these are really great, I hate to say. It. Okay, J.P. Morgan Chase to settle bid rigging, rigging allegations, meaning corruption, crime, bribery, for 211 million, which to JP Morgan Chase is like uh, three minutes of, of revenue. So yeah, they admitted to wrongdoing. Well, good for that, because usually they don't even have to do that. And they'll settle with 25 states and numerous federal regulators, the SEC and the Justice Department and the OCC and probably the CIA and the BBC and the Beatles too. But uh, $211 million, that's a witch hunt. Okay. Uh, what can I tell you? Uh, this is America today. And, um, you know, it, it, we're, we're in a situation now with all those millions of people unemployed, but they, they get their unemployment benefits when they get them online, so they don't agitate at the, at the unemployment office anymore. A lot of them are in the suburbs, so they don't go down to town hall and raise a ruckus. So who knows where all of this is going, but I like to stay optimistic. I wrote a piece on the 4th of July, and I called it something like the new war of independence against corporate politics. And I feel comfortable talking about this on the Young Turks because I know Jenk's with me on this. Uh, and Jenk, if you're out there, man, we gotta talk. We gotta talk. Um, but the gist of the piece was this, okay. In 1776, the multinationals and big corporations of the day, East India Company and Great Britain and all that, they, or England, they ran the system then and we rebelled. Now we've got a tea party that was actually started by uh, traders on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. So we've got a corporate tea party, but sooner or later, people are gonna get tired of this stuff. I can't believe this is gonna go on forever. We've got a system now, we've got a housing market in complete collapse. We've got a system that is designed for periodic failure. We're, we're not going to be over the current recession for the foreseeable future, and we're probably gonna get another one in the next five years or so, and maybe sooner. So uh, a thought experiment for all of you. What does it take before people get tired enough of this stuff and what's a constructive way to react because you know uh, destructiveness is bad and nihilism is bad and hopelessness is bad uh, you know there's a piece uh, by Chris Hedges who's a great writer democracy's already just destroyed the corporations have already won I don't believe that Arab Spring showed us they don't win even when you thought they won uh, change over the Soviet Union where I did a lot of work in Eastern Europe they don't, they're not in control even when they think they're in control. So it ain't over till it's over. Uh, we've 
told you a lot of bad things today. Don't despair. Despair is the biggest enemy of all. I'm sorry to preach, but I thought we were going to be done before now, so I had to fill in the preaching in order to, to finish up. But honest to God, don't despair. Uh, it's not over till it's over. Keep the faith. Uh, we'll have somebody else with you tomorrow. And I thank these guys for giving me the opportunity to be here. Uh, I try to be gentle. Uh, peace and love. We're done. Thank you so much. I'm Richard Escal. This is The Young Turk. And we're back. Thanks for your tweets, guys. There was some interesting ones we were reading during the break. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for your <laughs> tweets to Misty, guys. Of, yeah, there's some sort of encouraging ones. <laughs> some really good ones and some bad ones. What are you going to do? What you're going to do is know their tweets. Okay. Yeah, they're just tweets. They're tweets. They're our way of staying in contact with the viewers. You like Twitter? For what? It depends on what you're using it for. In I, general. You're a nerd. I will tell you this. I, there was a Twitter science fiction magazine where you had to write a science fiction story in 140 characters or less. An entire science fiction story. You know, and they had like an Easter story, a Christmas story, or just a general story. I sold them three. Wow. Three. You're going to have to tell me about that next story. time. Yeah, no, no. I, I think Twitter is awesome for some things, and for others, it's like Twitter. It's just Twitter. Okay, it's just Twitter. Yeah. We're going to go into a little a lighter topic right now. Um, Mila Kunis, a uh, big movie star, you guys know her. She's in this upcoming movie called Friends with Benefits. She was asked out on, on a, through a YouTube video from Scott Moore, who is a Marine in Afghanistan. And I want to show you guys the video. I think we have it. Hey Mila, it's Sergeant Moore, but you can call me Scott. I just want to take a moment out of my day to invite you to the Marine Corps Ball on November 18th in Greenville, North Carolina, with yours truly. So take a second, think about it, get back to me. All right, bye now. You know, I like the idea of this more than I actually like the video. No, no, I disagree with you because I like the video. I think he's kind of charming oh, in, you in, do. in a way. He strikes me like a. And he had a little confidence. He's asking us to He had a little too much here. confidence. I, 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 I liked it. All right. I love the idea. I love okay. the idea that he asks her. This is what, you know, from Afghanistan. I, I, I'm so grateful to him for serving over there. And um, I love the idea that this happened. And hopefully it's a fun evening for him and for her. Well, uh, she said yes. He did. Yeah. Well, I, I killed okay. your punchline. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I killed your punchline. She said yes. Right? She did. How because, did that happen? Um, well, she's actually being interviewed by Fox News with Justin Timberlake. I think they were probably promoting their new movie that's coming out. Um, and she was asked if she's going to attend the ball on November 18th in North Carolina. And it was actually Justin Timberlake, her co-star, who was persuading her to do it. He said, have you seen this? Have you heard about this? You need to do it for your country. And so she was like, okay, I'll do it. That was what he said? You have to do it for your country? Yeah. I mean... That's a weird angle to take. I mean, if you say it would be sweet to do, here's a guy asking out from it, but you have to do it. No, no, how, what exactly did you have to do for her? <laughs> Go on a date with a Marine? I don't get that. Yeah, no, I don't, like I don't think she has to do I that for her I don't feel like country. she wanted to go for herself. She wasn't deciding that for herself. She felt pressure. She was being interviewed, and Justin Timberlake's telling her to do it. Okay, so, so we I have... I don't like that. So, you know, that guy on Twitter who says, you know, just bear with this guy, he's going to have to bear with this. Because everything <laughs> we, we've been talking about, like the moral point mm -hmm. or whatever. Okay, nice, sweet that a guy in Afghanistan who's serving his country gets a date with a movie star. That's kind of nice. But she but, doesn't know him at all. But, yeah, but no, that's okay. In the old days, in the 30s, the movie stars did that all the time. Well, today, there's but a lot of creepers. here's what I don't like about it. First of all, the guy, I, I don't trust him. I, you know, well, sec exactly. Should she have done, like, a background he check? He looks a little, I don't know, shaky to me. Uh, he look. I, I wouldn't let my daughter go She's out with that guy. She's definitely going to bring a bodyguard. I'm mean, just going to be honest. I thank him for his service. I wouldn't let my daughter really? go out with that guy. Yep. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, he, he, I don't let my parents tell me who I I don't me. like him. No, no. <laughs> All right, well, okay, we can't hey, only Mom. get into so many morals at a time. Okay, and I'm talking about like a, a, a underage girl. Okay, but okay. all right. Okay. Now, okay. that said, I also don't like any woman to be pressured on TV by a man to do something with her private life that she's not comfortable doing. I agree with you 100%. So, Justin, back off. You heard it from the man. That's it. Back off, Justin. 
He's a good actor, he's a great dancer, great singer. Lay off. Lay it off. I agree. I'm not a huge fan of Justin Timberlake, so I don't have any problem saying Justin lay off. Well, if I gave the impression that I was a huge fan of Justin Timberlake. <laughs> well, you're a music might, fan. I think he's great. You know, okay. I think he's great. I mean, okay. he's not my he's thing, talented. but you know, he's great. He's okay. very talented, except at dating advice, where he has no apparent talent. So stay out of that field. Stay out of it, Justin. Stick to your acting and music. Okay. Have we done Justin and uh, and yeah. the date? Yeah, I think now? we're good. Okay. I think we're good with that. Um, would you like to talk about another moral issue of police officers revealing bra sizes? Well, so the story <laughs> is, uh, uh, tell us a little more. Okay, okay, I can tell you more. So in Indianapolis, in a metropolitan pol uh, police station, there was a police commander who had to apologize to 13 women who had their bra size, their height, and their weight emailed out to the department on accident. Well, now, are you sure this isn't a misunderstanding? Because when they say, when they broadcast and say 111 in progress, they're not referring to undergarments. So it, it, it isn't possible in any way that there was a misunderstanding of something uh, like I don't think so, <coughs> okay. but a good try. Good That's try. That's bad. That's bad. So it is bad. Um, it was in the, an Excel spreadsheet because the email was supposed to tell the supervisors oh to inform the officers that their new protective vests were ready to be picked up. But oh, some of the vests had okay. to be tailored for these 13 women who had big breasts or small breasts or something. So it was accidentally emailed out. Oh, it was accidental. Oh, well, you know what? That happens. Yeah, but departmental emails are public information. Yeah. So now they are. Yeah, that's what this article says. Well, I'm no, that doesn't it. make sense. If a, yep. Well, maybe this one was, but obviously, if they're investigating a murder and emailing it, well, that's not. But yeah. so, so it's public. So it can't be taken away. No. Well, then. Well, I mean, that's, if you want to find other bra sizes, you can now. But um, the police union was actually maybe going to take legal action because some of the women were really upset. Well, that's understandable, yeah, isn't it? I think it's absolutely understandable. I would be furious if that happened to me. Yeah, well, I, I can't say I, you know, obviously it's not going to happen to me. You're not a woman. Because I'm not a woman. But, uh, yeah, it seems like a terrible thing to have happened. And, but but I'm, I thought when I saw the headline that somebody was doing this deliberately and uh, oh, that no, there no, should no. be disciplinary action. No. It's an accident, it's, it's unfortunate. It's a careless mistake. I know everyone is human. Right. But it's a little bad. It's I bad. I think it's kind of bad. It's bad, yeah, yeah. Okay, we agree. We agree. Yeah, we agree we on agree. that. A moral issue that we agree on. And they didn't re release their veil size. No. Okay. I don't know if there is veil size. Would a policewoman be allowed to wear a veil, a Muslim policewoman? That's an interesting question. I don't think so. Uh, yeah, I guess. Wh okay. Why does it matter? She's not the suspect. She's the policewoman. I don't know. We'll think about we'll that. We'll tackle that next time. Yeah. <laughs> we like to go deep on the Young Turks. Okay, now we're going to get to the story. I, that, I really like this next story because it's opposite of the 700-pound woman who's making a living off the internet. There's actually a new vending machine company called Vend Natural that is a very fast-growing vending machine company because they're putting healthy snacks in the vending machines. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know how they keep this stuff fresh, but right. they said that, say, instead of a bag of chips in the vending machine, they're putting kettle corn, vegetable chips, apple chips, and granola bars. And then instead of soda, they have carbonated water, soy milk, organic apple juice. And then instead of, like, candy, they have individually wrapped bananas and freshly cut fruit. And they currently have 420 vending machines in 22 states. And you're happy about I this? I love this idea. I'm a health okay. freak. I love my health foods, and I just can't get enough. Can I do a quick survey of everybody behind the glass on the other side of the glass from us? If any of you guys was desperate to find a vending machine, and all you found was these healthy vending machines, what would your reaction be? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Well, I know everyone in this Our office would put their middle finger up because I see what they eat in this office. There's constantly junk food that I'm fighting off everywhere. When I office. want a bag of chips, I want a bag of chips. And you come to the Young Turks office to get it. <laughs> That's where I got to go. I, I'm not allowed to eat them at home. So uh, I absolutely despise junk food. Yep, bring there, it. See, it's right Fritos. there. And I, there was Fritos. some M&Ms there let's over up, there. Let's up the ante with some Fritos. <laughs> There's another bag of chips. Everyone's scrambling to find the junk food in the office. It's hilarious. Right. If I'm jonesing <laughs> for Fritos yes, or M&Ms. Look at that. McDonald's is actually next door. I probably shouldn't say that. but If somebody... It is. I said I need a chips or some kind of snack, and somebody offered me... Apple chips? <laughs> that wouldn't end well. 
I'm just going to say that right now. And you know what? Right. I try to eat healthy. Mm -hmm. I do try. I was even a vegetarian for a couple of years. But you know what? When I Good want chips, I want my chips. Yeah. And I, wa I want them, you know, I don't want apple chips. I'm completely opposite. Yeah, not well. an indulger. Do not like eating junk food. Makes me feel like shit. Makes me look like shit. I just don't want to go there. Well, you know, it's great that we live in a country <laughs> so free where soon you'll have your vending machine and I'll have my vending machine. But if there can only be one, it better be mine. You want to fight? Well, no, because you, you, eat, you eat healthy food, so you could kick my ass. Yeah, you're right. I eat right, junk I food, and I can't move that fast. But this is good. Okay, <laughs> think about it this way. Um, the federal government has banned junk food in a lot of schools. This is uh -huh. going to be good for children because this vending machine company is pushing to have the vending machines in hospitals, in offices, and in schools. Oh, that's bad. I hate that. What? I you hate that. You don't want that. healthy kids? Um, yeah, sure, I want healthy kids, but, but uh, hospitals... You know, I mean, when I yeah. have to visit somebody in the hospital, I'm stressed out and I need a bag of chips. And eating healthy food is probably going to help that stress go down and make you feel better. Yeah. Whether you think that or not. Yeah. You know what? I, I don't I mean, like I'm gonna that. I'm going to fight you on this. I'm going to be bummed out about that. You know, if there's only these healthy things in the hospital, you know. I, I don't think that they're saying it, it's exclusive. Okay. They could have both vending machines. Oh, well, then it's great. Then it's fine. I'm like a big believer in choice. I like the fact that there's going to be this yeah. option now. I'm a big believer in choice. Okay. Yeah, I I'm wonder. I'm a big believer in that too. I wonder if people got high on medical marijuana, <laughs> which they vending the machine they vending would buy machine. from. So if they went down to the hospital to, to smoke some medical marijuana, and then they went to the cafeteria, and there was like the two machines, which one do you think would do better business? That's almost a, the silliest question you've asked me all night. Well, obviously I'll try they're to gonna go it. for the junk food one. Well, you know, the meeting market. I demand. won't. You you wouldn't. I right. won't. All right. But okay. And all the athletes of the world. Ah, they eat all the worst crap. Athletes burn so much, you know, that they can eat junk. They can, but they don't. Yeah, Come on, well. Misty. Okay. What? That, uh, there's no... Lay it on me, Steve. There's no healthy food in the vending machine. They're just tricking you. It's all marketing. It's uh, loaded mean? up with sugars and other stuff. It's no good for you. Yeah, it is. There's fresh cut <laughs> fruit. Kettle corn? That's not that Steve, great. Yeah. I, I think you Steve's kids. right. You should be Steve happy about has this a story. My, my kids don't eat out of vending machines. How healthy can that be? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Well, they can now, but it doesn't make me raise a question about how do they keep it fresh? Well, yeah. Are they changing the vending machine every three days? And kettle they corn? Have to. You think kettle corn is, is healthy? It is the healthiest kind of popcorn. Well, but that and wasn't what I asked. Potato chips. The healthiest yes. kind of popcorn is like, you know, the skinniest person in Donna Simpson's house. You know, I mean, I don't is think there's anything healthy? wrong with kettle corn as long as there's not butter on it. I think it's fine. Just a little bit of salt. It's fine. Yeah, you know. All right. OK, good. Well, so I'm glad there's choice and you can the, have the your Young boring food. Health hour. Yeah. Well, I don't count me in on that. <laughs> OK, I'll do the tech hour and leave. Okay, I'll, do the, I'll the do the nutritional no, I actually eat hour. pretty well. I actually eat pretty well. I do. Oh. I don't eat junk food very often. But when I want it, I want it. Do you cook? I do not. Okay. I do. I, I have the skill. But neither of us at home cook very much because we're so busy. It's a lot of... My wife's a great cook, but we do a lot of takeout. Mm -hmm. That's not very healthy. Well, it depends on what you take out from. Hey, we might be taking out from your vending machines for all you know. <laughs> See, you don't, They're you, not my vending machines, well, first of all. Well, you ought to buy, uh, you I like it so much, you ought to buy stock company, in it, you're selling it already. Because I think it's already. a great idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's a good okay. idea. Okay. It's a good idea. I'm just okay. not feeling it in the heart. You're not feeling it, gosh. No. Which side I, I, are you on? The obese woman or the vending machine company? I'm kind of right down the middle of the road, actually. Okay. A typical American. <laughs> That's me. I, I never claim <laughs> anything but. <laughs> all right. Okay. We got anything else? I think we killed this story. Do we have time for another one? I'm afraid if we get into this one, it's going to be really long. Yeah? Okay. This is a really long story, but it's really interesting, and you'll like it because it deals with the music industry. Excellent. Um, so there is a music manager named Ray Daniels who talked to, um, uh, to NPR about Rihanna, her new album called Loud. He goes into all the details about how much money it actually costs to make a hit and get it on the radio. And the total amount that he calculated, he goes into a lot of details about, detail about it, is $1.7 million for one hit to get it on the radio. And that includes having a writing camp, having people write the songs for Rihanna. She has to pick them. You pay the songwriter. You pay the producer. You pay the vocal producer, which helps Rihanna sing the song. Then you pay for mixing it. And then $1 million goes into 
travel for Rihanna to promote the song, for marketing, and to pay the radio stations, which is a little bit shady in this article, um, what they talk about things that they do to get the radio stations to play the song. That's why radio sucks. That's why radio sucks. And you know what's weird about it is that I grew up in the days of like, you know, Beatles and Stones and Dylan and Axe writing. But before that, even before oh, you're that me. Old? You don't look that old. Oh, P oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's because I eat out of your vending machines. But, okay. but even before that, you know, that's how the music industry worked. We've come full circle mm -hmm. where you bribe the radio station, you find somebody, you write the songs for them. It's a factory. That's why the music sucks. That's why the only good music is independent music. That's why the so only good are you saying hip hop artists changed? are independent hip art. Uh, what? Are you saying nothing's changed? I'm saying it changed and changed back. Okay. It got better, it got worse. Okay. And that's why I think it all sucks now. I want to tell you one more thing. There is um, someone who was a program director at BET. Do you know BET? Yes, of course I okay. know BET. Is. Okay. And 10 years ago, he said he received $40,000 in $100 bills of cash in a suitcase to play a song. Did he play it? Um, sure he did. <laughs> Uh, well, you know what? That's why BET sucks. No, I don't know. I don't, but look, 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 you know, there are great artists out there now. Great artists. Great artists in rock and roll. Great artists in hip hop. Great artists in all fields. But they're not getting airplay because of this stupid, right. dumb system mm -hmm. that this article is it's, about. It's, it's the labels. It's the labels doing it. They're dead. It's not the artists. The music industry is dying. Just roll over and die. Lior Cohen, okay, who runs negative, one of the big Nancy, labels. Calm down. Lior, die. All of you, die. Go away. Okay. Let music be reborn as something good. Okay. How That's are we gonna, what I said. How are we going to do that? Uh, get rid of all those guys like Lior Cohen. Num and then let music industry reorganize itself around the artist. There's obviously something wrong with this because $1.7 million, that is a lot of money. How do they even make that back? Well... Uh, that's a fascinating question. What they do now is they do what they call 360 deals. In the old days, if I had a hit record, I didn't, but if I had a hit record, they got the money on the record, I went out and toured, I got the money on the concert and on the merchandise. Now a record label gets a 360 deal, they got money on everything. So Rihanna has a hit record, okay. then they get a piece of her concert action, they get a piece of her merchandise action, and she's basically beholden to them. But what they didn't mention in this article is actually how much Rihanna got. That is the one thing they left out. Well, they don't so know. I don't know how much she got, and I'm assuming she didn't get a lot because they didn't mention it. Well, they, no. Uh, she I don't gets, think she gets a lot. I doubt it because, you know, the music industry, the sales are crappy. So she's probably not getting a lot in royalties. Mm -hmm. She's probably out on the road making money doing gigs, selling Might be better to be a producer. Well, it would be better to be a producer or to do your own thing, you know, to, to put out your own record and, and get a bigger chunk of the profits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm a big indie fan. A lot of bands are doing that. A lot of acts are doing that. Mm -hmm. And they're making money. They're not billionaires, but they're making a living and they're doing their music their way. And you're a musician. Uh, yeah, I'm not, uh, not anymore, not professionally, but I used okay. to be. If I were coming up now, that's what I would do. Absolutely, 100%. Okay. I would never go near a major label. I, yeah, and, and I think that's a, definitely a big misconception. I think a lot of people go for that, but then they get there and they realize, crap, this is so not the way to go. Yeah, I mean, it's like saying I want to start a newspaper. You know, the newspaper industry is being changed by the internet. The music industry is being changed by the internet. They missed the whole thing. They let Napster eat their lunch because they were asleep at the switch. They still want to make their fat salaries. You know, I mean, uh, good for Rihanna for trying, but uh, better well, to just No, but let's be honest, it. she's not really doing much. Nah, but I mean, yeah, I was trying to be nice. But, okay. But, you know, yeah, get out of that system. You know, make some music that matters, you know, or don't, but make the music you want to make, you know. Okay. There you have it. That's me to you, Rihanna. I hope you're listening. <laughs> me to you, Rihanna. I actually, I'll admit, I actually have Rihanna's new album and I like it. Is so it any good? I guess yeah. they did a good job. Well, yeah. I like it. Maybe not a million sevens worth, but I'm glad they had a nice album. Well, I think that's it, guys. All right. Well, what do we conclude? Um, don't get a high if you're a Muslim woman driver. Um, police mode. And Rihanna... Hang in there. You'll get your million seven there. back someday. Uh, and Misty, it was a pleasure. It was so thank nice you to so meet much. you. So nice co-hosting with you. Thanks, thank you to the Young Turks for having me back. Thank you. I'm sure I'll see you guys soon. Please don't tweet at me any more hateful stuff. Thanks.